Hi, and welcome to episode four of the tale of Shaggles and Petruchio. Things have got a little sticky in the river for our friends. How will they unstick themselves? Here we go. As Petruchio and the other river folk settled down for the night, Shaggles lay at the feet of his master on the veranda of the farmhouse, gazing out over the land before him. Ah, Shaggles, said the man, rubbing Shaggles in his favourite spot between his ears. What a good day's work I've done! And he gave a great contented sigh. Tomorrow, I'm going to go out and buy some cows. Today, I dug three dams with my tractor. Three! It was so easy, just dig, dig, dig and it's done. I reckon if I buy 12 cows and I build three more dams, then there'll be two cows to a dam. How about that, Shaggles? Then it will be like a proper farm. Shaggles shifted uneasily at his master's feet. Something didn't feel quite right. How did 12 cows need six dams? And what about all the water the dams would take from the creek? but he supposed his master knew what he was doing. Yeah, continued the man. Isn't it lucky that we bought this land with a creek running through it? Means we've got an endless supply of water. Maybe I'll get some ducks as well to swim on the dams, just like in the picture books. What do you reckon, Shackles? And tired from his day's work digging dams in his tractor, The man let his head fall back and nodded off to sleep. Shaggles crossed his paws, one over the other, lay his head down on them and went to sleep too. Shaggles normally slept soundly, dreaming of big meaty bones and really good pats. But that night he was restless and his dreams were all muddy and fuddled. When he woke up in the morning, his master had already gone out on his tractor. He'd left Shaggles breakfast on the veranda. After devouring it in two gulps, Shaggles bounded down to the creek to say hello to his friends. Plop was the first one he came across that morning. She was dabbling about in the shallows, taunting the worms that lived in the mud. Shaggles watched her pull a worm away from the mud, stretching it to its full length before letting it snap in a slimy little curl on the bank. Plop, do those worms like you doing that to them? asked Shaggles. Plop looked up from her entertainment and looked at Shaggles down the length of her beak. Of course they do, Shaggles. They love it. They say it's like doing yoga and being on a ride at the show at the same time. Listen carefully, Shaggles, and you can hear how much fun they have. Plop pulled another worm up to its full length and as she let it ping back down, Shaggles could hear, very faintly, because worms don't have very big voices, a long wee. And then, as the worm hit the ground, a teeny ee. Do you hear, Shaggles? They think it's fun, remarked Plop, before eyeing Shaggles curiously and saying, Shaggles, do you know what your master has done this morning? No, Plop, I don't. Well, my dear dog, he has, in that great greedy green machine of his, built another three of those great muddy holes in the ground. Then I saw more men deliver cows. Twelve, I counted, and he's put two cows next to each hole. Then even more men brought a flock of ducks and he's put them in every hole, and now he's started up that pump again, and he's joined pipes to every hole, and water is being sucked up from the creek into all of them. If he fills them all with water, there'll be no water and no fish left in this creek. The fish will all get sucked up the pipe. If there's no fish, there's no food here for me. I'm leaving, Shaggles. I love this river, but that man is destroying it. I mean, one hole would be enough, surely. But your master's just gone bananas. I know, Plop, it's terrible. 
I don't think my master really knows what he's doing. I mean, he's not a proper farmer. I don't think he really understands how things work around here. Oh, Plop, where are you going to go? asked Shaggle sadly. I'll go out to sea for a while to catch some fish and then I'll see if I can find another creek. Other humans are doing the same thing all the way up this creek. If everybody takes more than they need, the creek will die. But what about the fish in the dams, Plop? Couldn't you eat them? I'll miss you if you go away. Eat the fish in those holes, scoffed Plop. Those fish won't be any good for eating. There's already cow poo and duck poo in that water and there's no current to keep the water clean. That water will become poisonous to fish and those fish will give me an awful tummy ache and shaggles. I do not like tummy aches. No, I'm leaving. Maybe one day if things get better, I'll come back. And with that, Plop took one of Shaggles' ears in her beak, gave it an affectionate little wiggle, and then she spread her huge wings and took to the sky. Shaggles watched her go, and then dejectedly flopped in the mud by the bank to think about things for a moment. Straight away, there was a sharp nip on his tail. Ow! Is that you, Petruchio? asked Shaggles, looking about for a claw in the mud, and finding it just sticking out of the mud a little way under his golden fur. Yep, squeaked Petruchio. Why did you nip me? asked Shaggles. Sitting on me again? I'm sorry, Petruchio. I wasn't looking where I was sitting. It's okay. How are you today, Petruchio? Pretty good. There's more mud than usual today, said Petruchio happily. Why is there more mud today? asked Shaggles, bemused. Because the water's getting sucked up that pipe. Creek's going down. More mud. More bugs. Got a tummy ache. Well, stop eating bugs for a while and your tummy ache will go away, offered Shaggles. OK then, agreed Petruchio. Have you seen your fish friends today, Petruchio? Um, I seen Gloogly, I seen Palala, I seen Flugia. What about Julep? No, hadn't seen him, replied Petruchio and blinked his orange eyes at Shaggles. Well, that's strange. They're usually always together. Come on, Petruchio, let's go and see what's up. Shaggles and Petruchio headed for the water. Petruchio scuttled through the mud, occasionally stopping and flicking bits of mud from his claws at Shaggles. They landed on his nose and made him sneeze. Shaggles wondered why it was that all his friends liked making him sneeze. Petruchio thought Shaggles sneezing was hilarious and couldn't stop laughing, which for a yabby sounds like something between a chook's cluck and a cricket's click. Between the bouts of mud landing on his nose, Shaggles did notice that the water level in the creek had gone down quite a lot. Where he would normally have walked easily to the bank to put his head in, now he was slipping and sliding in the mud, trying to get a firm paw hold, until all at once he lost his grip and went sliding all the way down into the water, paws, chest, back, head and all. Shaggles started to swim, but when his paws kept hitting solid ground underneath him, he realised he didn't need to swim after all. The creek was so low that he could stand up quite easily, with his head out of the water. Oh dear, said Shaggles. I didn't realise how fast that pump works. My master has already taken so much water, and the pump is still running strong. This isn't good. Not good at all. Shaggles stuck his head under the water to look for his fish friends. Three of them, Palala, Gloogly and Flugia, were huddled together in the shelter of a big rock, downstream of where the pipe was humming and sucking, humming and sucking. Hello, bubbled Shaggles. Hello, 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 Bob blocked the three fish, very demurely, which was most unlike them. Where's Julep? asked Shaggles. Went up, turned around, gone, came down, wasn't there, told you, did not, wasn't my fault. One at a time, or I can't understand a word you're all saying. Flugia, can you tell me what happened, please? Flugia spun around towards Shaggles, 
her eyes half closed with sadness. And the pipes started getting louder and sucking harder and lots of other fish were getting sucked up with all the water from upstream. So we decided to swim downstream of the pipe so that it couldn't get us. We all swam to the far side of the river as far away as we could and we all held on to each other's fins and swam really hard and fast against the sucking. We all made it past but just at the last second, Julep let go of my fin and said that life was for having fun and for going on adventures and he swam back and was sucked up the pipe. And as she finished her story, she began to cry. What will happen to him, Shackles? Will he be all right? Will we ever see him again? He's so young, he won't be able to look after himself. And then Gloogly and Palala began to cry too, and the water around them went all bubbly and wishy-washy. I'm so sorry Julep has gone, said Shackles. We have to think of a way to get him back. Could Plop go and find him like last time? asked Flugia. No, Plop has left the creek. She's gone out to sea to fish because so many fish have gone from the river, replied Shaggles. We have to think. There must be some way we can save him, Shaggles wondered aloud in desperation. I'll go, squeaked Petruchio, who had been sitting at Shaggles' feet. What, you? How would you look at that claw? You're only a mud yabby. You can't even swim properly. What good would you be? Bob blopped the fish. Be quiet. Let him speak, said Shaggles to the frantic fish. How could you save Julep, Petruchio? I'm a yabby, stated Petruchio matter-of-factly. Yes, I know you're a yabby, but how could you save a fish from the dams? Just go up the pipe, said Petruchio. Get into the dam, find Julep. That bit's easy, because I can see in the mud. Then I'd have to ask him to sit in my claw... And I'll bring him back down the pipe. I might be little, but I've got massive muscles. Want me to have a go? Petruchio, th that's very kind of you. Shaggles turned to the fish. Well, what do you think? Oh my, Petruchio, could you, would you? We'd be so grateful. Thank you, good yabby, brilliant yabby friend. Yes, best friend, Petruchio. Bob lopped the fish. All right, Petruchio. Looks like it's time for you to have an adventure. Good luck, called Shaggles, as Petruchio began to move away from them, upstream toward the pipe. No worries, squeaked back Petruchio. Petruchio kept scuttling until he was level with the pipe. Then he lifted up one great claw and waved goodbye to Shaggles and the fish. He let go of the mud with his other claw and was lifted up into the churning water. He spun in mid-river a couple of times before the pipe sucked him up and he was gone. Thanks for listening to the Kids Story Room. Bye till episode five.